Hi guys, welcome back to the Eddian Project. Indeed. A few weeks ago we showed you a new piece of equipment, in fact it was our first analogue piece uh, of equipment and it was a... It was a Clark Techniques KT2A, um, it's an LA2A clone compressor. It was indeed. And today Ed is going to show you how to upgrade it with four is it four, Ed? It's four new valves. Four new valves. Up upgrade valves, yeah. So stick with it. Marvellous. OK, then, Ed. So, um, as you can see, Ed has uh, extracted from our small little rack over here. He's got the unit out and um, you've got the valves and we're all ready to go. We'll just let the guys know first of all. Yeah. Um, so guys, this is, this is quite an easy procedure, but... It is, yeah. If any of you guys have not been in that habit of it, tinkering with your equipment mm -hmm. anyway, you might not feel confident. No. They can't, well, I'm saying you can't do it well, you can't do it wrong, but it is quite easy. But if you feel that way, mm. get, by all means, get someone else in to do it. Mm. But I hope this video will show you how easy and painless it is. Mm. And um, maybe you can do it yourself. Mm. Anyway, this is what it is. So we have this. Having said that, though, if you don't mind me butting in there. Not at all. If you, uh, if you build PCs, go for it. Well, yeah, if you do anything like that. Yeah. But as I say, if you're not confident, give it somewhere, but you'll mm. see how easy it is. Mm. Anyway, what we have here, this is a, this is the upgrade kit. We bought this from Watford Valves. Mm. Yeah, no, Watford Valves. Watford Valves, yeah. Um, I've done, dealt with them before for years in the grade. And these are the upgrade that they recommend. And I don't know what's in this because we haven't warmed up yet, but I would assume there'll be some form of Chinese valve. Yeah. These are actually Harmer. Mm. Um, these are Harmer Retro valves. Mm. And Harmer is a great brand. I mean, mm. they, they use them in, well, for up modern Mesa Boogies. Mm. And all your, you, you can check it out what they use them for. Anyway, mm. it's a set of Harmer valves. We have a pair of balanced, and that's like matched. We have a pair of uh, ECC 83s. Mm. And that for the American guys will be. A pair of 12AX7s. As well, yeah. We have a 12BH7A. Mm. Not exactly sure just what type of valve that is, but it could be a rectifier mm. type valve, something like that. Anyway, if you guys know, let us know in the comments what comments, it is. Yeah. And the fourth final valve is a power valve. Mm. Actually, I don't know why it's in there because mm. power valves are normally in the back end of an amplification. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, it is a bit odd. It's a low powered. Mm. It's a EL84. Now, I've got an amp, um, and I, I have a 25-volt com combo, and it's got two EL84 mm. in it. For what power, it would do, it's yeah. 25 watts, so I'm assuming mm. these valves put out about 10 to 12 and a half mm. watts. Anyway, that's your four valves, guys. Mm. Um, the only other thing you'll need is uh, a hex head um, bit. Mm. On, your, on your screwdriver mm -hmm. for, for the five heads that you'll see mm -hmm. point to them oh, one in each yeah. corner one yeah. in the middle at the front yeah and that's so basically what we'll do is mm -hmm. i don't know if there's any there may be some in the back i'm not sure if they're mm -hmm. we'll get to that in a minute i think maybe the, those ones are yeah the well. one at the back but again yeah. again they are hex, hex heads mm -hmm. so if that applies we'll have Five on the top, mm, three in the back. Three in the back, yeah. And that's it, it will lift off. So anyway, here we go, guys. Here we go then, Ed, so yeah. We're, we're now going to... Fingers off. crossed, everybody, yeah. yeah we're going to... Oh, they're a little bit on the tight side, guys. Mm. Oh. So the actress to well, the bishop, yeah. Well, it is the actress to the bishop. Mm. Now, I think that might be the wrong head, actually, although it felt mm. the grip on it. And... Is that one... Coming now. Mm. That one is coming out now. This one's coming out, yeah. So we're hoping. And a that, praying. And a hoping and a praying. Mm -hmm. I'll put these in the back, guys, so as we don't lose them. Excuse me. Because they're very specific scr screws. You know, you mm -hmm. won't have these. Flying about. No. Yeah, in a toolbox or anything. You have to go and source mm. these out and, 
and they're very tiny, so they're easily losable. Mm, they are losable, yeah. You know, and it's, as you can see with the glasses, we're both nearly half mm. blind anyway, so it's not a good thing. To, and we struggle to breathe, yeah. Yeah, and according to some, there were a couple of old men can struggle yeah, to breathe. So, you know, breathe. Uh, maybe you shouldn't be watching us doing things like this. You know, what might be not a good advert. No. Anyway, this, yeah, I hope you're enjoying this, you know, seeing us. It's about taking out screws. And, little screws, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we have three out. Uh, this one here. You could have another go at this Well, one, I think no. he's actually coming loose, so maybe I was there. Uh... Yeah, he is. It's coming out now, yeah. I don't think I'll put these in just so tight. No. They've obviously been really slick in the... With a machine, yeah. Going in, in, in the factory yeah. and... Uh... It's not a good thing to over tighten the screws because no. you have to strip them out and then they become useless. Useless, and especially yeah. things like this. As I say, mm -hmm. it's not you've got something ready, readily available. You always just pop mm -hmm. one in. So we have the five screws now mm -hmm. taken out in the in the top. In the top, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll move these. Move them. Hold a second, and we'll put them there because we don't want them on this, not the screws. Uh, oh, one's on the floor, Ian. One's on the floor, yeah. So. We turned him up. Picked it up, yeah. And now, guys, you should be able to see the three screws that I'm talking about here. here yeah, the three here, screws, the yeah. Top, and we just remove these and, yeah, it's the same fitting, although it's a diff uh, slightly different. It's got a dome head mm. rather than flathead screws on now that, that you have on the top. And, uh, and yes, they've got little spring washers in. Now, there's two reasons just... that I decided to do this. Is one to get it sounding more like the original. And two, I noticed quite a lot of, it distorts quite easily. And it can I be heard, quite gritty. Yeah, gritty. And um, we're hoping that this will make us a little bit cleaner, well, aren't we? Maybe, yeah. maybe the valves, it's adding to that as well, mm. yeah. But we'll see what happens, you know, when we get these in. We will, yeah. Now, there you go, guys. Oh, and you can see how easily that just, when I do the last screw out, that just fell off. Mm, and something there, look, yeah. Right. Well, that's just a cap. Yeah, well, it would be. And that cap goes on, I'm sure it was on your mm. power valve. Because the power valve, your EL84, mm. is slightly taller than the other three mm. valves. And and because he's up a little bit taller, he's getting close to the underside of this. Mm. So I think what they've done is they put this, the rubber cap on it, and that else it isolate them isolate it yeah that's what that is so anyway there you go guys there we go yeah so we'll flip him now on back onto his back mm. and then you see the gubbins inside look at that yeah. yeah now this is the only part here that, that we're not, that we're no. not replacing today this is no. the optical element mm. um, and i believe as i say there's not a sample on that but if you look mm. um online at the upgrades black lion audio Black Lion, yeah. Make a direct replacement for it. Mm. And they've got it uh, modelled as the um, the TB4L, I think it is. Well, Something like that. £120. Pounds, yeah, yeah. Like 120 quid for that. Um, I'm not sure for you guys in the States. Mm. In fact, you guys in the States probably get it a little bit cheaper because it's an American company. Mm. So it probably might be slightly cheaper buying it in the States yeah, than it, might is, be, yeah. it is in the, here in the UK. Anyway, that's it. So I think the first thing we'll do, guys, is... I'm going to pull this one out. Now, this is your mm. EL84. I can tell without looking because that is mm. the, the tallest valve. The tallest valve. That yeah. one that's sitting on its own, I would imagine. Mm. If I'm not right, I haven't thought, we'll see when we take them out because they're stamped. Mm. That looks as if that's going to be your 12BH7. Well, it would be, yeah. And the two that are sitting here side by side, I'm pretty positive that's your two ECC 83s. Mm, anyway, he knows stuff. Yeah, so here we go, guys. Mm. So you just be careful. You need to wiggle them out slowly. Wiggly, you wiggly, not, yeah. Because you don't want to pull them no. too much, otherwise you uh -huh. bend the pins. Yeah. And then we'll uh, pull them out. Look at that. That is how he's done. Now, wow. I don't know if you see this up here, guys, but on that, mm. on the fitting, there's a series of uh, little, um, but there's little, um, what are they called? Holes where, where the pins will fit in, mm. but there's one missing, and it's you've got like a gap mm. between the first and last. And yeah. if you look at this, there is a gap here, there's a gap, yeah, between these two pins. So that's just dead easy. That's you it, just yeah. line you just line that gap up, the pins up with that, 
mm-hmm. and it's long. Now, mm. you can see how much better that is, Martin. Oh, yeah. Harma EL84 Retro, mm. and it's been burst tested. I mean, I'm assuming that's like a power salt test that you put mm. where the computer's mm. lying on. And then again, you can see there's the the space. Mm. So it, it, it can only go in one way. Mm. You don't try and force them, you bend the pins. Mm. So we take them and we line up. Excuse me, I need to move this a bit, guys. I need to look away from you because mm. I can really see um, just by looking down on top. We find the sock, you find it very easily and then you just see him in until he's firm mm-hmm. and when he's firm in they're like ah that's him done mm-hmm. so we have our el84 in mm-hmm. now i see oh i'm just lo- noticing here guys um oh i don't know if that's a bit of spider web or is it not or is it not it's not it's a bit of mm-hmm. glue, glue stringy glue but this uh the transformer here you can see it marks it's midas yeah and uh there's also another part here which i don't know particularly what that is but again it's midas designed and engineered in the uk so mm. it's midas and uh, so mm. there you go let's now wiggle this little valve out wiggly wiggly now so i think what we should do is um i'll space. take first of all because mm. you never know we'll take the original el84 mm. and we'll put it in the box mm. right and then Ian can uh, put these away just in case you ever need, if something goes wrong, goes wrong, you have got a spare. At least it's working if you put the old one back yeah, in. You've yeah, you've got a spare That's until it. you get a replacement. Mm. So we've done him. The next one we want, we want to do now is this uh, 12B. 12B, H, yeah. uh, Now, what I'll do is I'll get this out and I'll then pass the box and the old, mm. and the old valve. And they're nice, nice and snug in here, mm. you see. Mm. Um, they don't want you to get them out, you see, no. you buy them, but they don't want you to use them. Mm. We'll give Ian that, mm. and we'll give him that, and he can put the valves back in. He wants to put the valve together. in here, look, yeah. Right, again, look, it's well marked. Harma, it's a 12BH7A mm. rectal, mm. drive tested. Mm. This time, not bus tested, this is drive tested. Mm. So, again, I don't know what that means, but the the the, um, the the way these are positioned, they're all positioned exactly the same way, mm. so that the slot... Or, or the missing thingy pin, you can see mm. it can only go in mm. one way, unless you're blind or an idiot. Mm-hmm. And if, if you are an idiot, I don't mean to offend anybody, but if you are an idiot, don't touch it. Mm. Get someone else to do it Somebody for you. Somebody else, yeah. Right. So what we need now, and I'll put this on before we get mm. so he goes over, this just cap goes just over your, your mm. rim. So it does protect it from shorting out against the thingy. Mm. And I've noticed there is a rubber, same thing here, there's like a rubber thing on your optical. On the optical, yeah. It's, it looks as if that's non removable. Mm-hmm. That's good. Anyway, let's pull out the first of our ECC 83s mm-hmm. or 12AX7s mm-hmm. if you're of that persuasion. Mm-hmm. Wiggle it, wiggle it slowly, gently. Wiggle it slowly yeah. and gently. Yeah. And it is the same, mm-hmm. it's the same orientation. Again, there you go, it's a. Mm-hmm. Um, now. Does it say ECC 83? It does, yeah. It's very faint. And Bagheera, Bagheera. And it says premium again. It's either valve or... Mm. Actually, it looks like vacuum. Which could he... Well, it's in a vacuum. Well, that's what they, the Americans call them vacuum tubes, don't they? They call them mm. a vacuum, vacuum tube. That's the two names. So we call, in, in Britain, we call them valves, you know. Mm. But they call them vacuum mm. tubes or, or just tubes. Mm. So that's that one. We will now... Replace it. Replace it with uh, one of the ECC eighty mm. threes. Again, they're slightly different. You can see mm. these other mm. two housings for the valves were part part of the board, mm. but the ECC ECC eighty threes are actually on um, a plug in. What they're, they're actually on yeah. a, a raised My uh, socket. Yeah, that's, that's soldered to the board, oh and then you plug into that. Mm. Why I don't know. Mm. It's that, but that is how it is. Then we just line up these uh, holes again, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, then you, wiggle and you can hear them click in. You mm-hmm. can't press down any further. You know he's in there solid. You do. That's it. But make sure they are in, guys. Don't mm-hmm. just push them in a little bit. And then mm-hmm. wiggling gently, the last one. Wiggly, wiggling. Uh, and again, there we have it. And we have this uh, same mm-hmm. thing, ECC83, Bagheera. Bagheera, yeah. And that will be your final valve, mm-hmm. guys. Uh, yeah. Now, there we go. Just marvellous. Well, it is. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah, it might be put that one back and then fold it on. Mm. And once again, yeah, all well marked up, harm above, blah, 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 same as the last one. So mm-hmm. we just line them up and line them up and... Lining them up, yeah. And he is seated properly. Mm. And he is... So that's it, guys. It's as simple as that. And all that remains now is put the cover back on and then hook them back up and screw them back into his rack. So we'll bring you back when Ed's put it all back together and put it in back into the rack and, and we'll, we'll do, do a quick we'll do test. We'll do a test on it, yeah. See back you in a minute, guys. Back in a minute, yeah. Okay, so Ed has now, um, haven't you, Ed, uh, reinstalled everything. Yeah, I've relocated it back into his rack. Yeah, you have indeed. Uh, yeah. Now, all up and running. We're not going to obviously show you a picture of the of the needle going up no. and down, but what we're going to do is uh, give you a bit of um, my vocal here, on, uh, which is a track that we're working on at the moment, isn't it, Ed? Yeah. And um, we're going to turn it off and honourable. Yeah, uh, off and honourable. Off and honourable, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can hear the difference. Yeah. And uh, although I can't give you a before and after, what I can say is that Hasn't it made it cleaner, Ed? Oh, it has, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I it's a lot more transparent well, and, and it's still it's still imparting the... We can't let them see it now because we... On hindsight, had we known this was coming up, the valve's going to arrive today and everything, maybe we should have made um, a file. Well, we had the file. Maybe mm. we should have run it with the old stock. Yeah. Unfortunately... We didn't have the, the, the foresight to do that. No. But what we can do, like Ian says, we can play the the, the um, unadulterated recorded file in, mm. and then you can, we can switch the compressor out and in, mm. and then you'll at least hear what the compressor's doing. Yeah, so that's what we're going to go do, but guys. What, what we have to say, sorry, Ian, but what go we have to say is, when we have used the stock before, yeah, we did notice... It got a bit gritty or a little yeah. bit, you know, almost approaching the distortion. Mm. No matter how much we drive that, now we've tried that just before we come on mm. line again, mm. we can't get it to distort. No. So these valves have made a difference. They have made a difference, yeah. Here we go then, Ed. Yep. Right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now on your screen, actually, let's start off with, yeah, it, uh, off, yeah. with it off, yeah. Morning, on your screen, you can come. see the... Um, this has been set up, although it's uh, external, it, it's the LA-2A clone. Yeah. Set up as um, as as, as a, an insert. It's an external plug-in. Yeah, an external plug-in. Yeah. And then, so what we're going to do is play it now without it, and then you'll see me switch it in and then switch it out. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Brindle coat so warm, now the days feel long. Since you're gone, and now in part you will play every day. What you'll notice, guys, is there's a little in description the of voice. I'm going to turn them down and try and Brindle Brindle so balance it. Yes, now now the so if, if you play it back again, in with it, you know, gone. I'll get a, an idea of the level. By my side, you'd stay. Quieter, isn't it? Yeah. So when you bring them in, I'll turn this. Output, I'll turn the output gain down, guys. Not the compression, but just the output gain from the compressor. Day. To match, hopefully, that volume. Tell me when you want me to press it. Ed. In the morning, you do it now. like you come. Actually, I'm turning them down now. Brindle That's about the same so now, yeah. So there you go, guys. Now the you make the comparison. Long. Since yes. you're gone. The compressor's in at the moment now. All right, so it's in at the moment, so as you can By see. By my side, you'd stay. Soft and calm I'm off now, yeah. Ways. And now we're going to turn it off. In my heart, you'll play every day. Yep. In the morning, like you come. Brindle coat so warm. Now the days are now in. Since you're gone, by my side you'd yeah, stay. Definitely. So there you go, go. Well, it's given from what I'm picking up, because we all here, we, we, we get our own things from things, you know. We do. But what I'm picking up from it, it gives a perception of a slight lift in volume, although I, I know it isn't. Mm. It's, I think it's because the compressor's doing its job, it's, it's making it sound a little bit more. Um, as if it's a bit louder because it's making it more present. Mm. 
That's right, Dave. It's making yeah. it more forward for yeah. you. Yeah. You can definitely hear it, guys. And if you play it slightly again, you just play it slightly again, like, Ed. I, so I can Soft tell the guys. And come always in my heart you'll play and every day. It's only given us on the needle about one to two dB compression. Yeah. You know. Why don't you increase it for the guys so that they can, you know, oh, well, well, push it up like you wouldn't normally do? Yeah. On the clock face, he's sitting about between two and three. Two and three. At the moment. But I'm yeah. going to wind it all the way up full. Yeah. Here we go yeah, then, you guys. Brindle so he's gone up so That's how up full. Now the days feel long. He's dropped the volume. Now you can really dro gone. hear the drop in volume. And now, yeah. and now guys, we're getting... By my side, you'd stay. We're getting almost 7 dB so, of compression. 7 dB, which is far too much. Which is too much, yeah. So, but you can hear... What it's um, doing. You can, you can hear what it's doing. doing, and you can hear now that it's... Well, it's, it's far better. There's no there's no grittiness at all about it now. Oh, it's just smooth. Very smooth. Mm. Very smooth. And, I mean, <laughs> in fairness, guys, we are still novices in using it mm. this way because... In the past, you can tell by our ages, we're used to the analogue world. We are. And what we've, it took us a little while to get our heads around this. Analog, but yeah. we've now been able to incorporate this external hardware into the digital mm. world. Yeah. We don't know where we get it, but it's gone now. Mm. But we've still, now that we've got it done, we, we still haven't perfected it yet. No, we'll still need to tweak it in a little yeah. bit. But as we go now, we know we're, we'll find out the best mm. way to use it. But it is great, it is great. Now, as you know, guys, we've also got an 1176 clone. Mm. Now, uh, a few of you might might know that uh, these are used in conjunction together sometimes, aren't they? In certain areas. That, like on vocals. Especially, yeah, they want they want a little bit of compression mm. on each of them. That's right. Rather than a lot of compression on one. Mm -hmm. And apparently a lot of them use that, and they run the, they run the signal into the 1176 to give it maybe one or maybe two dB compression, mm. and it runs out of that into the LA2, mm. um, and they only, again, they only get about one or two dB. That's right. But what the LA2 does over and above giving the compression, it gives that lovely valve warmth. Mm, it does, yeah. Next week, guys, me and Ed are going to show you how to use those two compressors together, Yeah. right? Going from one into the other, and then print... And print it on the file, yeah. And print it on the file simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. We just say before we go to the guys, we've saw a lot of guys that go on. I'm not disparaging anybody. And everybody's got their own opinion. Mm. But we see a lot of them, and one in particular we looked at the other day, saying, well, you put it in the plug in, but where it's great is because if you don't like it, we could change it. Now, which is true. Which is true, and you can. But all these great records we know, and I've heard that the Grammy mixes, and even these guys that are still... Doing it today, like the Andrew Shets, mm. you know, Grammy winning producers. Mm. He's still doing Beyonce and all these people at the minute. Yeah, you've got Andrew Shep, you've got mm. Bob Clear Mountain, mm. you've got, you know, Manny Mako, you've got them all. Mm. And I've heard it a million times. These guys have said, look, of course you were forced to do it in the analogue world, mm. but it was they thought it was the best way to do it. Because they said, when you've got too many choices, you start second-guessing yourself. You never get mm. to the result you want. Mm. They say sometimes, especially Bob Clearmountain, right, I remember reading about him, his, uh, his state of mind is, when he's wanting to be a band for the first time, or music, he goes in, here's the band mm. playing mm. live. Right. Formulates his, got this, mm. no, I know what the song is, and I've got the, the area, right. I know how I want to deal with this. Mm. And when he does that, He'll do whatever he does with compressors or mm. it, and it's printed. Printed straight away. Because yeah. he said that's because I know how I want the thing to sound mm. when it comes out at the end. Yeah. Mm. So he's got the idea of how the guitar. So he prints it, mm. and then you're not second guessing. And I can see that point. This way, <clears throat> you, we can now print to the file. Now, not only that, Ed, but you can. Uh, we've only got one of each. Can, so you so have to, yeah yeah. So that's if, another thing. Yes. Yeah. You know. So you know, if I want to use these analog compressors, that's it, you have to print. You have to print as yeah, you're going along. Of course. And then you can you can bring your inserts and put your guitar effects on afterwards. Exactly. That's fine. Exactly. But at least you've got the warmth of this, these compressors. Yeah. And then as you go, you can just select the compressors again. If you, well, that's right. And print it again. If you want a bit more, you can bring it in again. So that's it. So at least that way, guys, it gives you the options. You can use it to print the file or not. And, and mess around with plugins. That's mm -hmm. your choice. Mm -hmm. But all I can say is all the Grammy guys I've ever read about it says, don't 
don't keep second guessing yourself. Make a decision mm -hmm. and go with it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll be all the time flying in the air. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's like it's like making your mix. Mm. And then you go away and you go, oh, I should have done that. You know, I'll go mm. back there, mate. Your mix will never get done if you keep doing no, that. It won't. Go in and keep mixing it every day. And no. So that's a thought, guys. Yeah. Anyway, really enjoyed today's episode. And um, we'll see you next week and we'll show you how to set up um, going from one to another and print straight away. See you next time, guys. Ciao, guys. <laughs>